Hello everybody, this is Moshe, November Uniform 9 Mike. I'm an amateur radio operator and I am a member of the Chicago CERT team. This is a introduction to Anderson power poles, how to put them together, um, what they're good for, and more importantly, how to create Anderson power pole connectors and devices that will interoperate with other people who are um, our amateur radio operators who are doing emergency communications work. Um, let me explain. This is a sample of a household receptacle. I just pulled it out of my spare parts box. Uh, let me take a brief tour of this. If you've got one of these in your house, um, as long as it's been wired correctly by the electrician, which is you know not 100% guarantee, but you know, pretty good guarantee, this particular socket in the receptacle is going to be wired to something called hot. This is going to be wired to something called neutral. And this one over here is ground. And if you were to look at the wire for hot, it was probably going to be a black wire. If you look at the uh, wire for neutral, it'll probably be a white wire. And if there is a wire for the ground, it doesn't always have to be, it's almost always going to be green. OK, interesting. That is for house receptacles. Very strong uh, wiring code, how to make a house work together. Now let's say, for example, you are not in a house. You're just looking at random stuff around your house. Uh, let me pull something out of here at random. Uh, this is a battery, and the battery has this one outlet here that's used for a charger. Well, look at the size of that particular uh, <laughs> charger. You can know, imagine what the other side of that looks like. There are dozens of different sizes. There are dozens of different uh, voltages. Um, if you've ever tried to connect any kind of audio equipment together and you say, oh, I'm going to connect uh, this piece of audio equipment to that piece of audio equipment, you know, 99% of the, well, not 99%, but a good portion of the time, you'll end up saying, oh, wait a minute, I got a plug on one side, but on the other side, it wants bare wire, or both sides want plugs, but they're completely different plugs, or they're different, the same kind of plug, but a different size plug. This happens all the time. Well, so what? And the, the answer to the so what is, if you don't have something compatible for everybody to work with and you're out at some emergency location and you want to get power or lend somebody some power it'd be really nice if everybody would interoperate hence most people in the business of emergency communications at this point have agreed on uh, a de facto standard and I'm going to discuss it so what is it? There's something called an Anderson power pole. An Anderson power pole is a plug that looks like this. Let me hold it up over here. Uh, good, okay. Uh, this is the back end. There's no wire in it. Here's the front end. There's uh, the top. If you let me pull out my flashlight here and illuminate it because otherwise it's impossible to see anything. Ah, see, look at that. There's, uh, there's this sort of the top of the plug and there's a little piece of metal in there. Now, the Anderson power poles have this wonderful property that you can, you, there's no such thing as a receptacle. One second, let me reach over and grab that again. So we all know how you use this in your house, right? Oh, look, here's one of those green wires I talked about. I got a bunch of spares lying around at this point. Um, you all know that there's a plug that goes in, and the plug fits in one way. Okay, great. Uh, not like that, as we just said earlier. Well, you know, there's all sorts of different plugs for electrical stuff. Who knows what they look like, right? But over here, I don't have to worry about plugs and not having plugs. These will fit together. If I hold them the right way, I can take the red and plug it into the red and click. I've connected red to red. And I can connect the other color, which is black, Black to black. Well, let me just throw it down, 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 like that. Okay. So I no longer have to worry about the situation where um, I just can't get anything. I can't connect one thing to the other thing because, in point of fact, I can. That's great. Um, however, it's not so trivial because let's uh, let me 
build one real quick. These things uh, clip together very nicely and I'm going to um, put together a Anderson power pole for a moment uh, connector like this uh, let's see okay I'm just looking at one of the ones that I built earlier okay so let's uh, clip these together like this well, here we go they slide together very nicely alright okay now I just showed you before these things are interoperable, but are they really? Here, let's see this. If I try to connect the red one into the red one, and it works nicely. Great. Now, I can also put it together wrong. Watch this. I uh, slide same thing I did before. Um, slide them to not lock them together. Give me a sec. Every once in a while, I have. Come on, they slide right together. It's so trivial. What a tarnation. Oh. <sighs> Give me a sec, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to do this all in one take, okay? So I'm not going to go back and try to correct anything because, you know, there are, these kind of things happen while you're building stuff. Okay. Now I've made a different Anderson power pole. Right? Same thing before. Right? Before it worked. Let's try this. Can I get the red to go to the red? No. I can get the red to go to the black. Well, I don't want to do that. Red to red, black to black. What happened? Because these things have an orientation, an up and down, right? They're not symmetrical. Um, if you're not careful when you put them together, the preferred way to put together is, if you're looking at it from the inside, red is right, tongue on top, R-R-T-T. -T. See that? Let me see if I can make sure I got this in here. There's the tongue. You can see it at the top, and the red is on the right. If you do it this way, build your plugs that way, you're in good shape. What did I do over here? Take a look. Red was on the right. Red was on the right, but the tongue was not on the top. The tongue was on the bottom when looking at it. That's why it didn't fit. Okay, so let's review. All right, this is a uh, piece of wire that I'm going to make into like a sort like a little extension cord. Um, the I w the red is going to be the hot side, the plus side, and the black is going to be the negative side by convention. And now I've got to just simply figure out a way to get these wires to uh, connect into this, these little pieces here. And um, the first thing I'm going to do right now, before I do anything else, is uh, take this apart because if I don't take it apart, I might accidentally build something that will never ever work, which would be a bad thing. Okay, um, let's proceed. Well, how do I get these wires to, um, to uh, connect into these things and clip on and carry current and everything? So, first thing I'm gonna do is take my wire cutters and make this flush. Right, there you go, great. They are now flush. Okay, terrific. Actually, you know what? Um, let's see. I've got two of these. I'm gonna make uh, I'll make the shorter one into I make the shorter one over here into a jumper cable. Okay, great. So here's my jumper cable. Um, the next thing I have to do is separate these wires one from the other. And uh, sometimes this can be a little bit tricky. Okay, there you go. Excuse me for a second. Uh, okay, we're trying to get the fan camera to refocus here. Hmm. Um, we'll just continue, and after t after some small amount of time, generally the camera tends to refocus well. Anyway, moral of the story is this is the red wire, and this is the black wire. And now I want to put them in here. Well, how do I do that? There are these little itty-bitty things, which are hard to see, 
Um, I actually have an oversized one I'm going to show you. This is an oversized version of this device. And as you can see, uh, of this little uh, terminal they're called, Anderson PowerPoint Terminal. Um, this is a tongue. It's usually referred to as the tongue. This little piece, that round piece, you see it sort of lifts up over here. And then in the back is where the wire fits in. So in this small one, here's the tongue. See the tongue? Just about barely make it. Yeah, you can see it over here. And over here, the wire fits in here. So great, the wire fits in there. So let's uh, cut off a piece of wire here. OK. And I'm going to trim off this insulation so I can put the wire into this little terminal. Uh, problem here, how do I trim it off the wire? Well, oh, here's my wire cutter. you got to be careful with wire cutters. When this wire cutter came to me, if I closed it, it would close all the way and it would cut the wire right off. Right off. So what I had to do is take this adjusting screw over here and set it so that it was just the size of the wire itself. So when I squeeze it, it squeezes out something the size of the wire. Excuse me, let me put this down over here. Moving things out of the way so they don't get knocked off the table. And, um, great. Okay. Here I have a nice clean cut. I didn't cut any of the um, it's, you can you, well, it's hard to see once again. Let's see if I can get it illuminated. But look at the end of this wire. As you look at the end of this wire, you can see that I didn't cut off any of the wire, just the jacket of the wire that surrounded it. That's important. You don't want to, I mean, this is what's carrying the electricity into the contact. You want it to fit into the contact. But you don't want to eliminate any of the current capability, current carrying capabilities. Here it is. You can see the slides on very nicely. Fits inside. Great. OK. Let's do the black one. And the black one is about the same length, of course. OK. And the black one also at the same time. Once again, let's just double check to make sure it fits. Great. OK. All set. I'm ready to crimp this. What did I say? I said crimp. Crimp means I've got to be able to connect this and it squeezes the metal. It's a crimping tool is a tool that squeezes the metal over here. Well, in this particular case, remember I showed you that there was a, a round piece going down over here, a round piece going down, all right? Here you can sort of make it out. Um, I want to crimp on the same side as that piece. OK, great. So am I ready to crimp? No, I'm not. Let's think about this one more time. Here's the two pieces of wire, right? Great. And these pieces of wire are going to fit into the connector. Agreed? Great. Um, but this is not, this is a two-way piece, right? I mean, it can be facing up, it can be facing down, it can be facing sideways. Which way does it have to face? Let's look inside the tool, let's look inside the power pole connector. The power pole connector has that little metal piece in it, right? And we said red on the right, and if the red is on the right, the, um, the terminal is on the top. Well, guess what? In order to make this correctly, the little tongue, so here we go. I'm putting this down again. Sorry, I'll start over. Here's the terminal. The terminals, the little metal pieces up on top. The little um, tongue is sort of facing downwards. Okay, that little U piece, that little U shape is facing downwards. And if it's facing downwards, it will slide up over that metal piece that's inside and click into place. So not only do I have to remember that this is going to, uh, this metal, this uh, terminal here is going to be on the top, with, 
I have to remember that the that this piece is going to slide over it. So what is that going to look like? Let's turn the wire around like this. Here's the red wire, red wire. This piece is going to end up like this. And let me show you what it looks like. It's going to end up facing upwards. Let me turn it to the side. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Hold it down over here. Maybe you can see it. It's pacing upwards. And then you going to go, go over this and click into place. Great. Are we finished? Red right. Terminal top. The terminal top is, then this has to slide. This little tongue piece has to sort of slide underneath it. And I have to crimp it so that the crimp happens not over here, but on the other side. Okay, other side. I can turn it up over and do that. That's okay. Um, how do I crimp this? How do I attach it? There's a special tool. Let's put this down for a moment and review the special tool for just a second. Here's the tool. This is called a crimping tool. Um, I got it from Quicksilver. I'll Anybody's insert will hear from me about wh where I got all this material from. Anyway, um, the crimping tool, if you look carefully, has on the side over here, it says 15, 30, 75, 45. Okay? It can handle a lot of different currents. You can get these. Um, which one am I holding here? This guy over here, for example, this uh, example, big one that makes it easy to see things. This is a 45, this will handle 45 amps at 12 volts, which means it's going to handle, what, 500 watts? That's not bad. <laughs> anyway, um, it would crimp in this location here, but I'm doing a 15. The 15 is going to crimp all the way down there. This is a 15. Well, now I have to watch for three things. I have to watch that I am crimping this such that when it's crimped and I turn it over and I put it into this red right tongue top, which it isn't, you'll notice I've got it backwards. When I put it like this and crimp it, it will end up looking like this. And there's the red, there's the tongue is on top and I put, insert it and it'll slip over and everything is good. Am I done yet? Uh, I have to remember that the red is on the right, the tongue is on the top, this piece is slipping up, and I'm crimping it on such that this side is going to um, end up uh, getting the crimp. Where's the crimp? There's a little, if, if you were to look carefully at this tool, which is impossible to see, there's a little valley built into the tool at the bottom of the tool. Let's see if I can get this, the light to shine on it. At the bottom, in the middle over here, of the tool. Let me put this down. Okay. Um, if you look over here in the middle of the tool, there's this little valley. Okay. And that little valley has a sort of a line going through it. Maybe you can see it. I'm trying to see if I can maneuver it. There's a little line going through it. So you put that little line is going to hit the um, the tool, hit the sorry, hit the uh, terminal, and crimp it. All right, how do we do this? I'm going to try. Here we go. Am I right? The red is right. Okay, this is good. It will come in. It will slide in. Red right tongue tap. Good. I'm going to turn it over like this so that I can insert it correctly into the tool. Um, just the easy for, I find it easier to do it this way. Um, everybody's going to find their own way to do it. Okay. Oh, look at this. See this moved. Don't want it to move. I want it to lie very nicely and neatly in here. Okay. And there it's lying very nicely and neatly. And now I'm going to start to crimp. And you do, the crimping tools are slightly dangerous to use. You can just imagine getting your finger caught in there. 
this ratchet shut. This will no longer open up unless I use the release button. So I'm now, we have the wires in place, the pieces in place. I'm going to crimp this. And I use a mighty effort to crimp this. And sometimes it's easy to crimp and sometimes it's not. And sometimes you just have to keep on struggling with this device. Hold on, let me make sure that what I'm doing here is visible. To me, at least. Maybe if not to you. Okay, so I'm sitting there and crimping it, just squeezing it shut. And what I've found is that a lot of the times I can't simply can't open this. And I have to use the emergency release. Which let's see if I can do it this way. I'm going to take a brief break while I go get a tool so I can fix the tool. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I went and got a screwdriver and hit the emergency release on the tool. Um, this happens to me sometimes when, um, in this particular case, I don't know if you can see it, I managed to actually uh, crimp the um, jacket of the wire. And so it's not supposed to crimp the jacket of the wire. It, that's how it got stuck. Um, to let you know, a tool like this, um, you can if you squeeze it all the way shut, then it will release automatically. But if you get stuck, you can reach in like that and trip that lever, and then it will open for you. And that's what I did. Okay, so let's see if this came out right. Red right, tongue top, great. It's going to slide right over. Okay, let's do the black terminal. The black terminal, maybe I'll be lucky this time. Um, here's a black terminal. Um, it's essentially the same thing as the other one. I'm going to trim off a little bit more jacket on this. You see, if you look at a terminal, where well, let me get a terminal out over here. By the way, I went through about have at least a half a dozen, if not more, terminals making mistakes in the orientation of, of these things. And so get some extras. You're going to make a mistake. Maybe not a dozen mistakes or half a dozen mistakes like me, but you'll end up probably making a mistake or two. So let's see. Uh, now this is about the right length, you know. Well, you know, I'll give it a little bit of extra room. Okay. Give it a little extra room, maybe it won't get stuck. I mean, had no trouble last time. Okay, great. So now I'm going to put this terminal here. Look at it from the top. Yeah, I can see the, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little bit of wire sticking out from here. Looks nice and clean to me. Okay. So once again, I want to, whoop, there you go. I want to crimp it such that, okay, here we go. Sometimes you have to be a little, you know, by the way, you see me twisting the wire like that? I'm twisting it like I would do like a thread, to thread, a, thread a needle. Okay. Great. And twist it a little bit more, and here you go. Okay. What do I want to do? Is this right? Yeah, that's right. They're next to each other. Good. This one is ready to be crimped. Good. And I want to put the crimp over there. So I'm going to reach over with this device. And I'm going to put the um, terminal in there such that the uh, wire is sticking up correctly. Okay. Hold on. There you go. Good. Move this out of the way. Okay. Once again, stick it in. Now it's not stuck or anything yet, but it's ready to crimp. Just make sure this is in correctly. Okay, good. I'm now going to crimp. Let's see what happens. Oops. Let's not see what happens. Let's do that again. You have to be a little cautious here. Um, it's not sticky or anything. So as you can see, what happens is you're sitting there playing with it. And uh, since I'm in this funny I've got all these headset wires and everything. I'm not taping things down. 
ordinarily if I'm doing something like this I would tape something down to the surface I'm working on and then I don't have to worry about things moving around okay here we go move this out of the way can I put this back in let's see nope I'm gonna just crimp it all the way release it okay great go back here okay I am ready to crimp three two one oh hold on there we go the wire is starting to slip out here we go I'm crimping give it a mighty crimp putting all my weight on it and there it is it opened this opened up automatically that means I did it right got all the crimp in. you can see this big nice strong crimp here where sticking out a little bit okay now here comes the acid test red right terminal top here's the terminal I take it I come over here and I'm gonna slip it in now by the way for whatever reason that I do not understand I admit it I some I sometimes have to sit here for like 10 minutes and uh, try to get this terminal in. Um, the trick is that you have to get it absolutely, if you take it in, put it in there, and you know, it's like this or that, or you know what I mean? It's not gonna come in, it's not gonna slide in. So it takes a little fooling around, a little bit of pushing, and I, if I had more practice, you know what, sorry, the black one first. Black one. Terminal top, good. Come in. Snap, snapped in. I don't know if you heard the snapping sound. This is in. Now I want to get this one to slide in. Bet you nickel it's going to take me like 10 minutes to get it to snap in, but there you go. All right. And even if it doesn't snap in, I'll pretend I did it because the, it's getting a little bit late over here. Oh, there we go. Snapped in. Okay. I'm going to put these two together. Ordinarily, I would do them together. All right, here we go. Now, acid test. Can I put these together? Yes. There you go. So I've got a perfectly legitimate connection here. Um, just to give you an idea of how useful this is, um, I'm going to take the output of this. This battery hooks up over here. The load of the battery is going to come off of this and go into this little device. And this little device, take a look at that. I've got myself like a little extension cord thing. Um, I can plug this in here and then power. So this will be plugged into, uh, into let's, let's pretend this end is plugged in here. I can now plug in three or four, three devices, one, two, three devices, a little extension thing. So I can, my intention is that I'm going to have two radios, one a VHF, UHF radio, one, one an HF radio running off of this uh, little extension box. So anyway, let's review one last time. Red is on the right, tongue is on the top. That's not so hard. That's the way this is, we orient things in MCOM. Red is the uh, plus 12, and uh, black is ground, or negative, right? Okay. Um, however, because we're doing that, we have to be careful. Um, we have to make sure that we, you know, when we bake these wires, we actually make the, put these together correctly so that when we hold it this way, it is red on right, and the tongue is on the top. But that also forces us to look at the terminals that we're attaching to the end of the wire and we have to make sure that when we slide them in over these red pieces they're going to slide in like this so we have to be careful to put these wires in in the correct orientation and the other thing we have to be careful to do is when we crimp it we crimp it so that it's at the part of the wire here's the part that goes excuse me Here's the part that goes down, and here's the part where we crimp. Okay, well, 
Um, are there any questions from the audience? Okay, didn't think so. It's been a pleasure, everybody. Um, I hope you all enjoy this presentation. You know where to read if you're, um, this is Moshe NU9M. I'm sure you can figure out how to reach me through the ARRL if uh, there's something you need to tell me. And um, looking forward to working with everybody on next field day and uh, any other exercises we happen to um, carry out over the next couple of years. See you all later.